Toma was released to quite a lot of disappointment among the community, and despite having some solid uses pre-Dendro, was generally considered by most, or at least many, to be considered one of the worst characters in the game. Joining the ranks of a number of other characters we've covered on this channel, he got an insane glow up through Dendro and Sumeru, as Bersian teams are actually extremely powerful and he is one of the best in the game at it. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Toma is an off-field shielder and pyro applicator, and with constellations has minor buffing potential as well. His shield gets stronger the more you normal attack, becoming one of the strongest shields in the game just behind Zhongli. And his pyro application is actually perfectly suited for Burgeon teams. And he's also pretty good on teams that can use his pyro element, use his shielding or interruption resistance, or his pyro application. But before getting into his teams, let's start off with Toma's strengths and weaknesses. I'd say one of Toma's biggest strengths is his pyro application. There's a little bit of nuance here and I'm going to break it down for you. Some characters like Zhang Ling have no internal cooldown on their off-field damage. So every time the pyro nato hits, sometimes multiple times, it will apply pyro. When hitting enemies, however, Toma's burst does have ICD, so it actually needs to hit three times to apply pyro to an enemy a second time after the first time it applies pyro. And generally, that's going to allow him to do less elemental reactions for, for teams prior to Dendro, which meant that his damage potential was extremely limited. However, this went from being a terrible thing to a very good thing once Burgeon was released. And the reason why is because although the burst has ICD against enemies, the ICD basically doesn't matter against Burgeon cores since you only hit them once anyways. So it makes the Burgeon cores explode, but it does a key thing and that as you're targeting enemies, it doesn't apply pyro too often to the enemies because if you apply pyro too often to an enemies, you stop triggering as many Burgeons because you start applying burning. And that's really not generally what you want. Burning is not as good of a damaging reaction as Burgeon. So someone like Zhang Ling won't get as many Burgeons because she'll apply too much pyro and start burning the enemy preventing the production of further blooms. So all this to say, Toma is the, pretty much the perfect character for Virgin, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if they released him with Dendro in mind. The next pro that Toma has is if you build him as a shielder, his shielding is actually insanely strong. As I said before, his shield is strengthened as you stack it up and it gets stacked either by using a skill again or using the burst when your skill is already active, as well as whenever your on-field character normal attacks. So he has really good synergy with characters like Yoimiya, Wanderer, and even Hu Tao. The shield keeps stacking up and refreshing itself, and once it gets to max stacks, it is as strong or very close to as strong as Zhang Li's shield, which is insane. He also has a tiny bit of buffing from his Constellation 6, which gives a reasonable 15% normal and charge and plunging attack damage for your on-field character. Because you're constantly refreshing the shield, this buff will pretty much always be active. His final pro is his element is pretty good. Being pyro, of course, allows him to activate elemental resonance, which isn't the best elemental resonance, but it's still damage, we take it, as well as applying pyro for VV vapes, for, bur for burgeons, which we talked about already, and he just generally puts it to pretty good use. The weakness, as I would say, is it's a pretty small amount of damage and small amount of buffing. 15% damage bonus is the best type of damage you can generally give, but 15% is like, it's not huge. It's not nothing, but it's not absolutely massive either. And coupled with his subpar personal damage, aside from Virgin teams, he's generally a damage loss on most teams, which is somewhat made up for in VV Vape teams by the fact that he applies pyro that allows you to reduce the to swirl more easily with Animo and reduce the resistances of pyro. So if you're using an on-field pyro like Yoimiya or Hu Tao, he can have some pretty decent synergy. But the small buffing and the low damage really does impact how much he can contribute to a team. The next con is that he requires normal attacks to make his shield strong. So that reduces his synergy with charge attack characters only like Ganyu or any future charge attack 
bow users, it would be really hard to use Toma on those teams because you have to weave in normal attacks. You can play him with Ganyu, but it is really, really scuffed and I really don't enjoy it and I don't recommend it at all. Another con is he is fairly constellation dependent, mostly because his constellations in decrease his energy recharge requirements by a lot, especially constellation four. I personally found him kind of subpar pre-constellation four, at least before Dendro. And once I got constellation four, I felt he was a valuable asset to my teams. Now that we have an idea of what he's good at and what he's not, let's talk about what teams he's going to fit into. Starting off with his Burgeon teams, these are definitely the teams that Toma is the biggest star in, contributes the most damage, and they're generally his best teams overall, if you can deal with the few caveats that they have. The main thing, the main form of Burgeon that I play and that has the highest single target damage, as well as really solid AOE as well, is this one here. The issue I have with it is the lack of survivability. And so I have switched out Fischl for Baiju, and I really like this, especially in AOE. In single target, it definitely loses a lot of potency. And you can also go for something like this, which also loses some potency in single target, but again, is quite good in AOE. You can run quite a number of different characters in this last slot as well. You could also try something like this. I think this would be actually quite interesting, but I, I don't have child yet, but I'll, I'll, you can bet I'll be trying it when I do. There are some other options you can choose for the final slot, but those are the main ones that I would go for uh, for Toma. And I really, really like this team. It does a lot of damage. It's a lot of fun. And you've got quite a few different options. And it's pretty free to play friendly. The only five star you actually need is Nahida. One of the bigger downsides is that it's an AoE team that doesn't have a grouper. And so it's not always the best in AoE, but it is really high in single target. However, if you're going to do a single target team, you can always switch out Toma for Kuki and Hyper Bloom is going to generally perform better in single target. It does require, again, some skill to manipulate the enemies since you don't have grouping. So if you are playing an AoE, you're going to probably need to learn more about enemy attack patterns so that you can take advantage of that AoE. But it is a really fun team. And as, as long as you either run this team and be careful about not dying or switch one of these two characters out for a more defensive option. I would say Toma and Nahida are pretty much necessary for this team to function at a high level. Um, then you have some great options for you with this team. The second team he has is a VV Vape team. And VV Vape means Viridescent, Venereer, and Vaporize. So Yoimiya is doing the Vaporizing with Yolan, with Yolan or with Sing Cho as well. And Kazuo is providing the Viridescent Venereer on this team. You can also run the same team, but with Hu Tao instead. You're generally gonna wanna choose Sing Cho for Hu Tao instead of Yolan, at least C0 Yolan. And I, I really like this team a lot too. It is, I would say, a bit tricky to play because it requires you to have very specific rotations to make sure you're able to swirl both Toma's Pyro and Sing Cho's Hydro. We're not gonna cover that rotation on this channel today, but you can find it on YouTube, how to do VV Vape rotations with Toma. There's gonna be plenty of guides. Kachingmains.com is gonna probably have a guide they have a guide on Toma that's really, really good. While we're here, the one thing I would say about their Toma guide is that they do talk about a team that I really don't like at all, <laughs> which is using Toma as like normal attack carry, like a physical DPS and using Toma as a, as a vaporized DPS. I understand what they're going for is that they're trying to be very inclusive of all different play styles, but to put this playstyle up along with all the other playstyles makes it seem like a viable playstyle. And if you're planning on tackling any challenging content, or even in general, it's just going to feel so incredibly weak compared to other teams and even other things you can do with Toma. It feels very disingenuous to talk about off-field vape Toma or physical Toma as a viable team or even consider it as a team. like. Yes, you can run physical Kazuha, but we're not, I'm not going to make a guide on that. Anyways, mini rant. Overall, the Toma guide is absolutely great. That's They've got tons of great stuff on here, and the actual good teams are on here. Uh, the next thing you can do is use them on a Geo team, which is actually pretty funny. The main reason you'd want to use them on this Geo team like this is if you really would like a Pyro unit to help with some elemental checks, but you want to still have that G and you want to still have that geo resonance. So geo resonance requires that your character is protected by a shield. And if you want another character that can help break pyro, break cryo shields, then you can build, bring Toma. Or if you just don't have Zhongli, but you have the other characters, 
you can bring Toma and he can serve as the defensive option for this team while also giving that Geo Resonance. Because again, you don't get Geo Resonance unless you have a shield character. So Zhongli or someone like Toma. Otherwise, unless you're trying to do those specific situations, um, like you don't have Zhongli or you're not trying to break a shield, then Toma is going to be generally a much worse option than Zhongli. And he has a lot more synergy with Wanderer actually, because he does give, especially at C6, that normal and charge attack buff, which he does give to Ito as well. But he also makes it really easy for you to get that additional attack buff from, from him swirling um, Pyro as he enters his special state as well as wander is using normal attacks all the time while he's attacking so that's going to refresh toma shield it's also very easy to play double pyro you get that pyro resonance and he helps with bennett's energy bennett helps with his energy and overall it's just a really nice synergistic team i'm really looking forward to playing it as soon as i get wanderer so those are generally his teams it's actually a really quite wide range of teams i also want to talk about one other thing is double hydro now double hydro is definitely again he's the strict downgrade to Zhongli in this team but if you don't have Zhongli like me and you're clearing a single target chamber it's really really good it's much more brain dead than vv vape so if you just are focused on single target bossing it's gonna clear really really amazingly because double hydro vape and then he gives that power resonance he gives some normal and charge attack buffing the only downside is unlike Zhongli doesn't give that Omni Shred, which is going to also shred both Pyro and Hydro. So much prefer Zhongli in this slot, but if you don't have him, it's still going to be really good. But now that we've gone through all his teams, let's talk about how to build them, how to get the most out of him. For level, if you're using him in a Burgeon team, you are going to want to get him to 90 all the way you get about 30% damage increase from going to 90 from 80. So it's super, super, super valuable to go to 90. If you're not using him in a Bridgen team, then I would actually live, leave him at level 80, not ascended because that last ascension is very, very expensive and you don't need those extra talent levels, especially if you're getting constellations. Like I haven't even leveled up my talents past past six and I've never had a problem with his shield in the abyss. Sometimes it's been a little shaky with the more recent abysses, I will probably get his shield, get his talents up at some point, but I'm pretty happy with 9 and 9. He has been very, very strong for me. I do recommend leveling them to level 8. For weapons, his actual best weapon for Burgeon teams is going to be the Katane Cross Spear. The Katane Cross Spear gives him both EM and a passive that regenerates energy for him, so you don't need to focus as much on energy which is really, 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 really valuable. If you go for something like a Dragon's Bane, which gives as much damage as the Katane Cross Spear, but no energy, you're going to need a ton of energy recharge substats to make up for it, or you're gonna have to use an energy recharge main, main stat on your artifacts, which feels bad to do. So for Burgeon, definitely craft up that Katane Cross Spear and get it to R5, super worth doing. And there's not all that many other pole arms that you're gonna wanna craft, so it's definitely worth it for that one. Even out of five-star weapons, that's going to be your by far the best choice. Other choices in Virgin, again, going to be those EM main stat weapons, as well as ER weapons. Potentially, I've been using my ER weapon just because I haven't crafted the Katane yet. And he's been 36-starring the Abyss with the Fav Lance, which is a huge damage loss. So my clear times that you're seeing in this video are going to be even better once I actually get him maxed out. For his shield support playstyle, I do recommend the Favonius Lance. It provides a ton of energy to him as well as a ton of energy to the team and it's generally very, 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 very good. If you're using your Favonius Lance on someone else, other energy recharge pole arms are going to be really good. Even the prototype Star Glitter is going to be a good choice for him. And if you already have a ton of ER substats, you can go for something like the Black Tassel to further his increase his HP. For artifacts, once again, it depends on if you're using a Burgeon or non Burgeon team. For Burgeon teams, you're going to want to go with one of generally two sets or three sets, I guess. The best one is the Flowers of Paradise Lost set, but it is a very small increase over the Guild the dreams the most important thing is to have a full elemental mastery set so i would generally only recommend the paradise lost to specifically farm it if you're also going to be getting wanderer in particular because it's obviously in the animal damage bonus or maybe Zhao. because otherwise the gilded dreams is just so much more high value and you can just go for elemental mastery main stats but if you absolutely want to max him out Yes, the Flowers of Paradise Lost is going to be the max damage. If you don't have full sets of either right now, or if you're working your way to, 
two piece two piece elemental mastery sets are going to be good options so two piece gilded dreams two piece paradise lost two piece gilded two piece wanderers troop those are going to be fine choices and still get you very far for constellations once again all of his constellations are honestly very good every one you get is going to be a pretty nice upgrade like increasing duration decreasing cooldown increased level increased energy increased level and then damage bonus like he has really really stacked constellations he gets a lot better with them they're not absolutely required burgeon teams are the most viable without constellations as a shield bot i highly recommend at least c4 and then c6 to really feel like a complete character and burgeon will feel best at c4 because you don't need to use as much energy recharge on him now that we've covered how to build him properly let's go over some tips on how to play him properly my number one tip is to make sure that you funnel your skill energy properly so you're going to skill and then burst and that way your character is catching your uh, particles before he bursts, you can see he's already almost all the way back up to full energy. It does two things. There's one, it takes more time on field, which means less time for your main character to attack. And the second is using your skill first, and then your burst means your your skill actually gets a, an additional refresh. So it's extra important for Toma that you skill first and then burst, more energy, and a stronger shield right away. The next thing you wanna do is make sure that as you're doing your rotation, even if you don't normally normal normal attack on a character it can be good to quickly throw in a normal attack as you're setting up your rotation so if i was you know dropping his skill and i switch twitch to official i might throw in a little normal attack in there just to get his shield starting up you don't have to do that it's not always optimal but i often really like it especially if you have sing cho on the team because and you've already used his burst then you're going to be getting more rain swords as well so it's not going to be a damage loss and generally you're just building up his shield so by the time you get to your main attacker you've already got some shield stacks built up and he's going to be stronger the final playing tip i do want to talk about but i'm not going to is his vv vape rotations there's just going to be better guides out there that are strictly on rotations and you just want to go look those up and follow those rotations to a t whether it's chingmaze.com or whether it's someone else on youtube there's lots of rotation guides so go check those out. So let's talk about Toma's value, how he feels to play, how strong he feels as a character, and my overall final impression on him. Toma to me feels like a solid B plus, A minus type of character. He's not absolutely insanely strong, but his version teams do a lot of damage. He's a really big part of them and he's generally really, really good. He's also a pretty decent buffer, a pretty nice stopgap for a bunch of teams if you don't have Zhang Li, and a pretty solid option on like Wanderer teams, VV Vape, Hu Tao, and Yuemiya teams. My biggest problem with those teams is that Zhang Li and Double Hydro is just generally so much easier and so much better and just feels better to play overall. So I think his value really comes through as a bird user. I would say that his value highly depends on whether you plan on building Kuki for your team or not, because if you're already building Kuki, Kuki, it's like, do you really need a Burgeon team in addition to a Hyper Bloom team? I guess if your other team is really, really single target focused, then you don't really want two single target focused teams, and Burgeon can be a better choice. So overall, I would say his value is pretty good, depending on what characters you're using. Basically, it's just if these teams, if some of these teams seem appealing to you, then you can go for them. I think the only team that's really unique to him and that where he's the best at is the Burgeon. Maybe, maybe Wanderer, although Layla could be argued to be better than him. I think it's uh, I think it's a bit of a toss up as to which one is actually fully better. And I don't think like every account needs a Burgeon team. So it's not like, you know, building Fischl or something like that and building a Singcho where that every account should build them. But he is a really, really excellent choice if you decide to. And his teams feel very strong. The, the thing that I don't like about his Burgeon teams as much, again, I've already talked about a little bit earlier, is because if you're building it for EM, his shields aren't as strong and there's not always a perfect defensive slot to put in there. But nevertheless, he's a really, really good choice. He's very strong. He has good value. His teams do a lot of damage. And for very little artifact investment, you're not, you don't need to min-max crit stats. That's something I really should have put in my pros list. You don't need to min-max crit stats for this guy. So overall, good value, feels strong, really, really solid character. For future prospects, I'm honestly not sure. I think that, you know, any new Hydro character 
has potential of working on a virgin team, you know, more AOE Hydra app application, maybe if Folklores does something like that, or Fur Furina, I think is her other name, I'm not sure. Some other normal attacking characters that want a pyro unit on the team could, could increase his value as well. Wanderer sort of came out of nowhere and surprised us all by having really good synergy with Toma, so that was really, really neat. I'm not sure what, what future prospects he could have. Let me know what you guys think. And finally, for overworld and aesthetic, I think having shield characters is really, really underrated for the overworld, especially fighting weekly bosses like Ajdaha or Senora. Having a shield character is really, really useful because even I die sometimes on those weekly bosses because if you're not paying attention properly, you can absolutely get clapped randomly by some big damaging attacks. And having a good shielding character like Tome on your team, you can even combine him with Bennett in the overworld because you don't need to min-max your teams as much. And then that helps with his energy recharge. I would definitely, for the overworld, give him energy recharge sands and energy recharge weapon so that you're always making sure you're getting his burst on cooldown. Then you can run him with Bennett and you're just never going to die. And that's really, really useful for those overworld bosses, especially if you're newer. It can be really, really helpful to have that interruption resistance. Um, he's just like a mini Zhongli. So he's really, really perfect for the overworld. Really, really like him for that. Um, I love his aesthetic. I love his, I love his boots and his cloak and... And I like his animations and his cool kicks that he does. He's a really, really neat character. And I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of Toma. Let me know what you guys think. If you want to see where I put Toma on my tier list, I made a really great tier list. And it's going to be right over there. Uh, I basically started my channel to make tier lists because I was talking my wife's ear off for an hour a day talking about which character is better than what. So I started this YouTube channel um, to talk about my favorite game. So... Um, if you've been enjoying the content, definitely consider subscribing and check out that tier list over there. I had a ton of fun making it, and I think it's the best one on YouTube. Take care.